Hi, my name is Blake Gerardo and I'm from the Humanitarian OpenStreetMap team. We're going to demonstrate some mapping today in central Swaziland. And this mapping is to help their malaria elimination program, which is on, on track to make uh, an amazing achievement and eliminate malaria from within their borders in 2016. Um, we're going to be doing building footprints, which they use in basically every aspect of their malaria elimination program. So they use it for general surveillance, individual case management, bed net distributions, interior spraying programs. Basically, foot, building footprints help with every aspect of their program. And so we've been requested to, to generate these footprints and provide them. And, and we're going to have a series of projects that do that. Uh, this project we're working on has a number, but this is going to change because this is our area of focus for now, but this area of focus is going to move around the country um, as we get sections done. So you can always put Swaziland into the search box and you will find the current project, current area of focus that we're doing the mapping for. So this is our mapping manager, what we call our tasking manager that breaks up these individual mapping tasks to make sure that people are not mapping the same area twice. Generally the first thing you want to do is read the instructions for any mapping task. Um, and this one tells you that we only need to worry about buildings and it has some specific notes and a link to some pictures so you can see what these buildings look like from the ground level. You should always review the instructions even if you've been working on the task or on the project for a while. Sometimes we update the instructions, so it's worth a look. Um, and then we have some general mapping notes that happen down here at the bottom. So we're going to go to the Contribute tab, and this is where it asks me to pick a square. Green squares are done, and they've been reviewed, and they've been marked as correct. So you can always look at a green square if you want to see what something should look like when it's done. Um, gold squares mean that somebody has done the initial mapping, but it hasn't gotten the review yet. Uh, and then squares that have you know, no, no color to them are ones that nobody has even started on. You might be able to see this one is outlined in gold, and that means somebody is currently working on that square. You can pick any square you want, but try and pick a square that's not next to one where somebody's actively mapping. So I'm going to pick one out here in the middle. And I'm just going to say start mapping. And what this is going to do is it's going to put that gold highlight around it so nobody else can, can select that square. We're going to go ahead. If you like mapping and you want to do a lot of it, you should eventually learn how to use JASM. It makes mapping go a lot faster. Um, it has a bit of a learning curve, but it's not too bad. So if you want to do a lot of mapping, it's worth it to learn JASM. But Almost everybody starts with the ID editor, and a lot of people stick with the ID editor. It's nice because it just works in the browser. You can use it any place. You can sit down and map for five minutes. Um, so we're going to learn to do it with the ID editor. So I'm going to say edit with the ID editor, and that automatically takes me to the aerial imagery, and it outlines the area that, that I'm responsible for while I'm mapping this particular task square. So I don't have to worry about anything out here. I just have to worry about what's inside my square. Um, and you can see it says zoom in to edit. And none of my editing tools are available because I'm not zoomed in enough. So I'm just using the, the wheel on my mouse. But you can also use the zoom in and zoom out buttons. And you can see that there's the plus and the minus on your keyboard also do the same thing. But I'm just using the wheel and my mouse. So all we're going to do is we're only looking for buildings. So you can sort of see where the buildings are. And there's no way to map them this zoomed out. But this kind of gives you an idea of where they are. And you need to cover the whole square. Your goal is going to be to map this entire square for buildings. So we're just going to look and then we're going to find a spot where there's buildings and then we're going to zoom in. We still can't edit. None of our tools are available. So I'm just going to use the wheel on my mouse and I'm just going to get in nice and close. And this is a you know small cluster. This is a farm or you know one homestead settlement type area. The some of the buildings are living buildings. Some of the buildings are used for maybe grain storage or cooking huts. Um, but this is you know one little residential settlement. And again, zoom in because you want to get a nice close view. 
So the three tools that we can use to edit are the point tool, which just lets us put a single dot on the map. We hardly ever use that. Uh, the line tool, which is what is typically used to draw roads. So I might grab the line tool and I could probably map in this road. Um, it's not part of this project, so I don't have to worry about it, but that's what the line tool is for. It's for highways, streets, paths, waterways. This looks like a waterway. I would use the line tool here. But the tool that we're going to use to do buildings is the area tool. So that's the tool I'm going to go ahead and select. So I'm going to zoom back in and I'm going to select the area tool. And you can see now my cursor has turned into a set of crosshairs. And to do typically to do a building, what you want to do is, so a typical building like this, you're just going to go from corner to corner to corner to corner. So I'm going to click, 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 and then you double click on the final spot. So I'm just going to go ahead and map this one and it's click. And you can see it's starting to draw the lines and the area. And then I'm going to double click to finish. And that's almost it. I've certainly mapped in that building, but now I need to come over here and I can I have to tell the software what kind of area that is. Right now it's just a generic area. So I could, you know, we could have done it could be a park or farmland, that would be a land use. Uh, it could have been a pond or a lake, then that would be water, and it could be some of these other things, but what we're mapping are buildings. So that was a building, that's a corrugated metal roof building. So I'm going to say building. And then it gives me some options. It lets me get a little bit more specific. With aerial imagery, like the mapping that we're doing, we can never, we never know how these buildings are used. So we never use any of the specific tags. I can't say that this is a residential building or industrial or even a house. The only thing I can say for sure is that this is a building. So I clicked on building and I'm just going to click on building again because that's our most generic tag. And that labels it as a building. It brings up a dialog box. If I knew more information, like perhaps the street address of the building, or if the building had a name because it was a, a, a hospital or a library or something, I could fill that in. We never, we almost never know this information. So you never have to worry about it. All we wanted to do was draw our area and then specify that it was a building. And then we're done, except for this one last step, which is I click one more time on the building, and this is, you know, the things that I could do. I could move it, I could delete it, I could make it into a circle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to square these corners. Because I drew it freehand, so it's a little bit, it's not exactly a, a proper rectangle. So I can either hit the S key on my keyboard, or I can just click on this icon to square it. I'm just going to click on the icon. And you can see now I've got a perfectly square building. And that building's done. So if I were going to do the next building, um, like I said, you know, these light colored ones, the way you find these buildings are the shadow is the big indicator that this is a building. It's nice and square. It's got a light metal roof and there's a shadow here. This is also a building, but this is a either a grass or a mud hut. It certainly has a grass roof on it, so it's sort of hard to see. So these are metal roofs. This is a small hut with a grass roof, but it's still square. You can see the the ridge lines go out to the corners of the roof. These are probably the hardest ones to identify. Luckily, you know, they're usually kind of together with other buildings, but they can be hard to spot. But this is just a simple square structure. So I'm going to get my area, and I'm just going to go corner to corner to corner, and then you double click on the last corner. And now, last time I came over here and I said building, but see, it remembers the last tag that I used, and it puts that up at the top. So all I need to do, I don't need to click on, if you look, there's this kind of shows a stack, which means there'll be options underneath here. But we don't need that. We're just going to say building. We don't know any of this information, so I just come over and I click one more time, and then I say square, and that one's done. And I would come back up and get my area tool. Corner, 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 double click, building click and square and that one's done. So this one's a little bit different. This one is not just a simple square building. It's the same basic principle though. I'm just going to say area tool and I'm just going to go corner to corner to corner corner. 
Okay, I'm going to stop saying that. But I'm going to do all the corners. And I'm just going to follow the footprint of the building. And then I always double click to finish. So that finishes it. And then I tag it as a building. Then I come over here and you can see. So this is definitely freehand. So I'm going to click one more time. Um, you can see if you, you know, if I hold over, you know, these individual dots, then some the icon changes a little bit. This is going to add another corner to it. This is going to let me move one particular corner. So when you click on these to select them, you got to kind of go in the middle there. And then I'm going to say square. And now I have a, a pretty nice looking building there. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to mapping buildings, nice square buildings. However, we have some round buildings here. So I'm going to show you how to map these round buildings. And it's a very similar process, except for one slight difference. So I'm going to get my area tool. Now, on round buildings, instead of trying to draw all the way around it, which you could do, probably the best way to do it is you draw a triangle. And you put the corners of the triangle on the edges of the round structure. So I'm just going to draw a triangle. And again, it's a double click to finish. This is true for any editing you do. So I'm going to double click. And now I have a triangle. I'll mark it as a building. And here's a little trick. Normally, you'd come back here and you'd click on square. But this one can't be made square. But there's another option that lets you make this one round. And you can use the shortcut key, the O key on your keyboard, or you can just click that. And now you get a nice round building. And I'm just going to do the same thing. And this is also a round building. That kind of looks like a round building, too. Area, I'm just going to say click, click, double click. This is a building. Come back here. Instead of squaring it, I'm going to round it. And this, to me, looks like another small round building. So I'm going to map it as a small round building. Double click, building, then come back here. See, it's kind of hard to get a good grip on it and then say click. OK, so this cluster is mapped. Oh, I'm going to grab this one last building. I probably do. You'll notice up here now it says save. And it tells me how many edits I've done. I tend to save after, you know, five or ten edits. You know, this is that save early, save often thing. So, you know, do five, ten buildings, then come up here and say save. So I'm just going to get this last building done real quick. Um, corner, 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 double click. I'm a building, and then I'm going to click and say square. OK. So I'm going to come up here. Now I've done eight edits, and I'm going to say save. And it tells me exactly what I did. So I can kind of review. I created eight buildings. If I had done anything wrong, there would be a big yellow warning box here. And we'll look at that in a minute. Then up here it says chain set comment. And this is you know a comment that you're going to type in. We default it that tells you the project. We're doing a missing maps project, Swaziland Malaria Elimination Program building mapping. But it helps if you come in here and say added some buildings. That just lets, if somebody's reviewing the work you did, that just lets them know exactly what you did. Had we did waterways or roads or fences or something like that, we might say that in here, mapped in a lake, mapped in some road, just so people know what to expect when they're, when they're looking over the work. And that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and say Save. And this up uploads it to OpenStreetMap. It's live. The minute this is done, now this data is now available on OpenStreetMap. So... The next person who needed buildings for Swaziland would get the eight buildings that you just added, and that would be added. So if I were working on this project, I would zoom back out, and I would go find the next cluster of houses, and we'd work on the next cluster of houses. And this one looks like, uh-huh, this one, these are houses, or buildings, let's say that. But these are the square roofed, these are the square huts, and this is a metal roof building. So I just grab my area tool, corner, corner, corner double click. You'll notice I don't map in the shadow. I'm just trying to map the footprint of the building. I'm going to come over here and square it. Get my area tool. Yeah, so you'll see I'm trying to go corner of the roof to corner of the roof to corner of the roof to corner of the roof. Double click to finish. So I'm not doing this shadow. This is the building. Come back and click on it. Let's say square. So these go pretty fast once you get the hang of it. Corner, 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 double click to finish. This is a building. Click and square. Once you get the hang of this, and 
you can do a fair number of buildings an hour once you get the hang of it. Square. Okay. Ah, one more here. I always zoom in. Just zoom in so you can see. Again, it's you can see the, the lines, the ridge lines of the thing, and you'll eventually get pretty good at seeing about where the corners are. Um, had this been covered by a tree or something along those lines, you want to do the outline of the building. So just, even if there's a shadow or a tree covering it, just do the square outline of the building or the round outline of the building. And, um, you know, don't, don't, don't let the shadow throw you off. We want the building footprints. So I've got about five changes, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Okay, now there's a warning over here. And this tells me that I have an untagged area. And what that means is that you can see these are orange because they're labeled as buildings, but this one is white. I didn't, I didn't mark this one as a building. So I can just click on this warning and it automatically highlights the area because I drew an area. Use the area tool. It automatically highlights the area that is not tagged. And now I can give it my building tag and now I can say save. It remembers my comment from last time. That's the same. All these changes look good. There's no warning. I just say save, and this shoots it up to OpenStreetMap for me. And if I were going to finish this square up, so I could go through, you know, this should take about 15, maybe a half an hour to do this whole square to find all, you know, I'm going to zoom in on each one of these sets of buildings, and I'm going to do what we just did, corner, corner, double click to get these things all mapped. Um, and I would finish this whole square. But I can't finish this whole square. I just don't have time. So what I do is I go back to the Tasking Manager. I'm just going to switch back to that tab. Um, I don't have tabs. You would have tabs. And I can either, and I'm going to unlock this. This is what I'm doing. And it says on the tooltip, stop working on this task and unlock it. And I can work on it again later. Or somebody else can follow me and work on it again later. I'm not going to mark it as done. The only time I would mark it as done is if I mapped every building that was supposed to be mapped in that square. Then I would go ahead and click on done because then this task square is done. I think I've mapped every building that I can find. But I didn't do that. We know that there's buildings that are not mapped. So I'm just going to unlock it and that just you know takes off the orange highlight. I can come back and work on this one later or maybe somebody else gets to it before I get back to it, but the point is we did not mark it done. We just said unlock, which means I'm going to stop working on it for now. Um, the text on that button might change at some point in the near future too, so it might not say unlock. It might just say stop mapping versus done. Done means you think you've mapped everything in the square that the instructions asked you to map. That's about it. Um, you know, if I finished the square, I would grab another one. I'd say start mapping, and I'd go through that same process again. And we just need to do that, you know, a hundred times and get all these squares mapped like people are working on here. And then this whole project would be completed, and then we'll open up another project that covers a different area. But thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for mapping. And if you have any questions, just go to the front page of the Tasking Manager, and we give you some options for where you can ask questions. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.